So a year ago, we unboxed the Photon Mono X on this channel, a nine inch large size printer. Well, today we're revisiting it with my thoughts. Anybody that's wanting to really get started with this printer, cause it's coming down in price and especially for an 8.9 inch printer, definitely a lot of good tips here. See you guys inside. Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. As I said, we are talking about Anycubic's Photon Mono X. The Mono X, I'm not talking about the new M series. That's another video, later on. But almost a year ago, I believe the video went out on April 13th of last year, we unboxed and started working with the Photon Mono X and I never revisited the machine. And there are some reasons for it and we're gonna talk about that today. And we're going to talk about a few goals that if you're getting interested in getting a larger resin printer, well, the new M3 is out. So of course the price for the Photon Mono X has gone boop. Now I'm talking about the Photon Mono X, not the 6K or anything like that. I only have the Photon Mono X. Now granted, superb machine, great price tag. I've seen it going anywhere from $300 to $500 some odd dollars right now. So it is a good machine. It's got some quirks, what 3D printer doesn't. And we're gonna go over all, some of that. We're gonna look at some of the prints I've done with it. And basically we're gonna really give my opinion of the machine after a year. So hopefully you guys find some good info in here. If you're thinking about getting this printer because the cost has come down, hopefully I really find some value in here and actually find some stuff going on in the channel that's useful. So before we dive into everything, anything, if you're new to the channel or if you're interested in anything I'm talking about here, hit that subscribe button. We're putting new videos out every Friday. We have um, streams every Tuesday night where we look at 3D printing questions and all kinds of stuff, painting questions, all kinds of weird stuff. But basically join us. We're trying to grow. We're working on growth. So please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell and hit always so you get notifications when new stuff comes out from us. Also questions about 3D printing. If you're new, if you're experienced, you're just stuck on a problem. Comments. I look at them. I don't always respond, but I look at them. And when one definitely is worth a response, I definitely respond. And if it is a question, I try to respond almost every time. So definitely keep that in mind. Also hit that like button. That interaction really helps us get out on YouTube. So definitely help us out. Okay, enough of the please help me. So the Photon Mono X. Here's what my plan is for this video. We're gonna talk about the printer. We're gonna look at some prints. We're gonna look at my settings to hopefully help you get started if you have this printer or if you're just stuck with this printer because I have really good luck with these, um, with these settings. And I'll, but I'm also gonna talk about what resin I have found works really well on the machine. So stick tuned, let's hop over to phase one, talking about the machine, the good, the bad, and the fun. All right, my thoughts on the machine. We're gonna, this is kind of gonna go back and forth a little bit because we may have more thoughts at the end. I like the machine. It is a good machine. I love the size of the platform. That nine inch build size is fantastic. And basically, you know, most resin 3D printers, I'm limited to, you know, things. I'm limited to the six inch build plate with these small little guys. Well, not so much. This is Mercy from Overwatch, printed with eSun Tough Resin. I printed it at a 45 degree angle, and it's about as big as I could get because of the wingspan. This is all one piece. It comes out really well. This one has not been primed, anything. It comes out really well, and I like how the size scale comes out. Now, if I laid that model flat, I can get real big with the model. Now, there are some defects on the wings and stuff like that. Uh, because supports were a problem, but not a true, th not a true issue. That was more experience issue than a actual printer problem. So, but again, you can get really good size prints with the high amount of detail out of this printer. So this Imperial Raider is just gorgeous how it came out and just the size of a print like this from a resin printer. I mean, this guy's almost a foot long. I mean, come on. 
If I had printed this with FDM, these wings would have been a nightmare. And the resin just does a fantastic job of printing this. And when you go into the ultra fine sharp detail, of course, of course I printed Star Trek with it. Um, you get really good sharp detail. You get the large size, which um, is a limitation of like the Vox Lab Proxima or the Halet with their smaller six inch build plate. That nine inch build plate opens up a lot of doors and also the height that the printer can go up to. So you have a great print volume. You have a really good way of working with it. And I'm gonna be open with you. The resin that I found best for my settings is the Anycubic standard, uh, the basic UV sensitive resin. This stuff works just about every time unless I lose a plate adhesion because my bed has come unleveled or something like that. Um, looking at the machine, the bed leveling, I love it. It's a great four point. It works really well compared to the Illigu where I have two bolts to kind of adjust. I like the four point, four point, two bolts on each side. I like that leveling method better. Creality also uses that same leveling method and leveling the machine is not hard. Um, it can be done relatively quickly, easily calibrated and you're up and printing. But there's a lot of good to the machine. I love the parts. I love the build. The machine is built very well. Um, but we're going to hop to the bat now. There, there is some bad. Um, part cost, part replacement costs are high. To replace the LCD, I was looking around on Amazon, it's like $150 for that LCD. Where in my Creality LRD002, it's 20 bucks. So there's definitely a cost in parts and getting the right part, because there's a couple variations of the parts. I actually had to buy an adapter when I had to replace my LCD screen. And one of the best things I can recommend, if you're doing anything resin printing, anything, buy the LCD screen protector. Just, just buy it. Links in the description below for multiple different printers. It is worth your purchase because if that FEP rips and that resin leaks on that LCD, a good chance, even with your patience of getting that dried resin off that LCD can be a nightmare. And replacing it on this one is expensive um, for parts cost. I mean, if you get to pick up, can pick up the machine for around three, four hundred dollars, and to replace the LCD is almost half the cost of the machine. That's a painful hurt when you could buy the LCD protectors for like fifteen bucks. So it's definitely worth the investment. Anybody getting into resin printing, I definitely recommend getting the LCD protect the protector because it's just going to save you. I have them on all five of my resin printers. My Saturn has one. My my Photon Mono X has one. I learned the lesson the hard way. I had to, I got lucky and Photon and Anycubic warranted my screen. I got really lucky. And uh, after that, everything's got a screen protector in case this happens. So definitely take that step if you're considering resin printing, always put that on your machine. Just do it. Uh, FEP, the FEP replacements can be a little costly. Uh, I think it's almost $30 for a pack of three or four through Amazon. Um, links to that is down in the description below. But I find I don't have to do that as much, um, especially if I take care of the machine, regularly drain the tank, filter it, and uh, refill it, and stuff like that. So keep the particulate out of there, keep that from hitting down on the FET paper and different things like that. So definitely care and TLC is important to any resin printer that you do because um, you know, you can leave the resin in there. The pigment's going to settle. If it settles, I definitely recommend a drain and refill. Um, and the little paper fil filters work really well. So with the little screens in the bottom. But always drain it back into an, an old bottle. Do not drain it back into your fresh resin. Just perk tip right there. So maintaining the machine is a bit hard um, in that regard. But if you take the proper steps of the screen protector, keep some extra FEP on hand. Replacing the FEP really isn't that hard. I can do it in about 20 minutes. It's more just time consumption of all the little screws. But it's actually a pretty easy process. Leveling is great. Use, knowing your resin is important. And at the towards the end of this video, we are going to show the screenshot of my settings because those will help you out a lot and save you a lot of time. 
Um, I wish I had known this in the beginning with the printer because the settings that come with the printer, no, way off for what this printer needs. Um, and that was one of my big downfalls and caused me a lot of heartache when I first, at first when I got the machine, I had a couple of good prints and then I had failure, 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 failure. And it was all settings. Now I do most of my stuff in Shinto box and even loading the Anycubic software, the settings were the same that Shinto box had and they're garbage. I spent a lot of time perfecting, surfing Reddit and finding good information to build the setting set that I have. And I'll be honest, I try to keep the printer around the Anycubic resin, but even with the Anycubic basic resin, the eSun tough resin and the eSun basic resins uh, work really well, which eSun has sent me some resins. I like the resins, especially this tough, because it is, if this was standard photopolymer resin, I would have snapped that wing off. It works well. So definitely thank you to eSun for sending the resin to try out. Another video on that coming soon. So back to what I was talking about. There's a lot of good things here. A lot of bad things. I love the printer. I love the print size. I love the prints that I get from it. I love more than anything, the detail that I get on these prints. You get very nice high resolution detail. I mean, let's be honest, this ship, you know what? Let's, let's even game here a little bit. Eagle Moss, Photon Mono X. So you go up to the 10 inch model from Eagle Moss, painted, shipped to you. You're gonna pay close to 75 to 80 bucks. Probably about $5 in resin right here. Huge cost saving, great thing. But again, time, effort, also gotta be taken into account. This is the smaller $30 version, but you guys can see the detail between the two. The detail's there. There's no problem with detail. So kind of keep that in mind as you go through this and looking at printers and deciding what you want to do because there is work that you have to do with these printers. So my settings may not work right for your machine, but we're going to get you darn close. So definitely keep that in mind. So I'm going to wrap up my revisit here and let's take a look at the settings and then we'll close out. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, but let's head over to the computer and take a look at those settings. All right, guys. So here we are in Shinto Box 1.9.1. This is, I think, the most recent edition available. And this is this free edition. This is not the pro edition. So keep that in mind as you're looking at the software. Um, I will eventually one day up to the pro, but not right now. So... Right now, you see the build plate for the Creality LRD-002, or LD-002R, sorry. I always get that one wrong, but you can see, pretty small build plate, right? So, let's click down to the Photon Mono X, and boom, that plate gets nice and big. Great size build plate, but we all know you're here to see the settings. So, let's hop into settings, and here is the default settings you get with the printer when you load the profile that Shinto Box has. And you can see it looks pretty standard, but there's some issues. The bottom exposure time I have found is too low. The exposure time is too low, is too short of duration. And these settings, the bottom lift speeds and stuff, I had to do a lot of adjustments to get good prints. So here's my profile. Bottom exposure speed of 4.5 of 45 instead of 40. My exposure time is 3.3 seconds instead of 1.5. My lift speed is 2.0. My, bo my bottom lift speed is 50. My bottom retraction speed is 100. My retract speed is 3. It is definitely slowed down compared to what they had. This profile works really well. I get great prints out of this profile um, and I don't want to change it um, to be honest with you with the Anycubic basic resin and the Illigoo or not the Illigoo the eSun standard resin these settings work great now keep in mind I usually print with gray 
pigment color matters. It will throw off your settings a little bit. And if you're new to this printer and you're just getting started, use these as a starting point. My settings may not work perfectly for your machine. Every printer is different. And I say this all the time. So kind of keep that in mind when you're doing this. But these settings have worked really well for me over the base settings. I'll tell you right now, their, their print, their test print, comes out beautiful every time. But when I try to use even the Anycubic software that comes with the printer, these settings suck. And it's the same settings that uh, you get with the when you first load the printer. I have tweaked mine quite a bit. I'm still always tweaking, trying to make things a little bit better. So kind of keep that in mind. We'll click over here to advanced real quick. And that's how I have my settings set up. Resin, machine, these are all pretty standard. Build settings. So hopefully you guys found the settings to be useful um, or a great starting point to get started with your printer and get moving forward. Um, Shinto Box, free software, works great, works for most printers. Um, there are a few printers that you can't use this with, like Creality's Halo 1, you got to use the Halo software. Um, there is ways to make this work, but it, it just use the Halo software. Um, it's just not worth your time. So really awesome settings. Hopefully this will get you started. Hopefully you, you found my opinion useful and let's hop over and close out this video. All right guys, that's my settings. That's what works for me. So definitely try the settings out, tweak them to work with your machine. Make sure you got your level on par and all that stuff. Make sure you have all your safety gear, your nitrate gloves, a pair of good glasses, a mask if you're in a written tight, not well ventilated space. Also, you know, silicon mats are great. They're down in the description below to put your printer on because the resin won't eat through or stain into your desk. And I actually honestly recommend an apron because uh, no one wants to get resin on their shirts and ruin their shirts because your resin touches water, it hardens. Shirt ruined. So keep that in mind as you look at this stuff and keep going. But all in all, would I recommend the Photon Mono X? It's a good printer. But there are other competitors on the field. Namely, Illigo Saturn S is also out there competing. And now you have the new M3 series that's really smart, up to a 13 inch build plate with an auto refill system. I mean, whoa! So, a lot of cool things out there. So, hopefully, maybe we can get one of those M3s in here. As we close out here, if you want to help out the channel and help us get printers in here and different things like that to test out, go over to Patreon. We have a Patreon set up. A YouTube membership is coming soon. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And also make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new here and if you found any of this useful. Because um, this is just me, and my opinion. And that's how the cookie crumbles with this one. So thank you guys. We will see you next week in the next video.